Congratulations on your purchase on the new Ziyun Smooth 4. My name is Jason Vong, and in this introduction video, I want to show you what all these little buttons here do so you can go out with confidence and get some smooth and steady moments with your new smartphone gimbal. Now to start using the gimbal right out of the gate, place your smartphone in between the clamp and ensure that it's balanced. If it's leaning too much in one direction, just simply unlock the dial here and make micro adjustments until it's leveled. Once you're done, just lock it back in place. Power on the gimbal by holding down this button right here and start your camera app. Here I'm using the ZY Play camera app, which is free on the iOS and Google Play Store. Once you boot up the app, there will be a Bluetooth connection window prompting you the connection between your phone and the Smooth 4. It should do it automatically, but if not, select your device. Now that's connected, let's go ahead and go over the different gimbal modes so you know what to use depending on the scenario. By default, we are in pan follow mode, indicated by this P, F, and L toggle above the power button. Pan follow mode only follows your left and right movement, but not up or down. By toggling down to L, you'll be in lock mode. The gimbal is now locked off in one direction, meaning it will not follow your left or right movement, nor up or down. And this is helpful for when you want to go on a straight path and ensure that your phone will not drift off course. On the back of the Smooth 4, you're going to notice two triggers. If you hold the bottom one, you will be in following mode. And in this mode, not only will it follow your left, and right movement, but also up and down. You can actually use the full follow mode to position the camera at an extreme angle. Just hold down the bottom trigger and guide the phone to where you need it to be and then let go. Now you can operate the gimbal at the desired angle, perfect to film up skyscrapers and trees. To reset the position, just double tap on the bottom trigger. If you hold the top trigger, you'll be in phone go mode. Now this is a new mode exclusive to the Smooth 4 that will allow you to quickly move the phone in any direction that you need it to be. Now the last mode is standby or sleep mode. You can easily clip up your setup when you're not using it or when you need to take a quick call. Hello? Yeah, uh, I'm kind of filming something right now. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you a call back. Okay, all right, all right and then unclip it to quickly resume filming. This is a great way to conserve battery life and also have the Smooth 4 ready for any sudden action. Now with those modes in mind, when you're ready to record, just hit the red button. And uh, that's pretty much it if you want to start using the Smooth 4 right away. But if you want to unleash the full potential of your new smartphone gimbal and take advantage of all the available features on the ZY Play app, well then I uh, suggest you keep on watching. Let's go over the user interface first. Starting in the top left corner, we have the home icon that takes you back to the device selection screen. To the right of it are a set of five icons. The first one lets you know if the Bluetooth is paired between the phone and the gimbal. The second one shows what photo mode you're in and we'll go over the different photo modes in just a bit. Third is flash, fourth is timer, and the last icon lets you know if HDR is enabled or not. HDR stands for high dynamic range. On the top right corner, we have battery indicators for both your phone and your Smooth 4. Bottom left corner, we have the album icon and the object tracking icon. And we'll talk about how to access these in a later part of the video. Lastly, on the bottom right corner, we have the filter indicator letting you know what filter you have selected to overlay your photos and footage. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the little buttons now. To navigate through the different menus, we'll be using the wheel to go left or right and the middle button to confirm our actions. Get it? Got it? Good, because we're going to start on the bottom with the basics. The red button here of course triggers movie recording. The button to the right of it takes a photo. The bottom button of the wheel allows you to access the album to all of your recorded contents. Now, it's important to note that you need to highlight and select the clips you want to save to your phone's camera row if you want to offload your photos and videos to your Mac or PC. If you decide to delete a clip, just hit the trash can button up here. Moving on, the crosshair button that is to the left of the record button, that is the zoom and focus toggle. And the wheel on the side controls those settings. If you're in zoom mode, the wheel will control the zoom. If you press the crosshair toggle once, it will be in focus mode. Now the wheel will control the focus. 
As we make our way up to the rest of the buttons, the left wheel button here switches between front facing camera and back facing camera. Right wheel locks and unlocks the exposure compensation control. By default, the camera app will shoot in auto settings, meaning it will determine the best settings to properly expose the shot for you automatically. However, exposure compensation gives you a little control. In case you need a little light in your scene, hold down the center button to activate the flashlight on your phone. Hold it down again and turn it off. Top button brings up the video resolution option. The maximum resolution and frame rate would depend on the phone that you have. Rotate the wheel to select your choice. Once you decide it, tap on the center button and hit the menu button to exit. Now, you may have noticed that there were a lot more options to play with than just selecting your video resolution. To bring those options back up, press on the menu button again. The first icon in this box is camera. When you select it, you have different photo modes to choose from such as panoramic, long exposure, slow motion, time lapse, motion time lapse, and vertigo. Once a mode is selected, to activate its features, you just press on the camera button. Now to not make this video too long, we're going to have to go more in depth on some of these other features and how to maximize them in future videos. But modes like the panorama, slow motion, and time lapses are very easy to use. The panoramic mode will move the camera around, take multiple photos, and automatically stitch them up for an epic shot. When slow motion is selected, it will record the video and will automatically slow the video down for you during playback. Other features like time lapse, long exposure, and vertigo will have a window prompting you to program settings and waypoints before automating the movements to capture your perfect shot. Moving on to the second icon, which is the flash. You can enable this to auto or on if you want to use the phone's flash to light your photos. The last choice in the selection is steady light, which just turns on the flashlight of your phone. The third icon is self timer, which counts down from 2, 5, or 10 seconds before taking a photo. Fourth icon is HDR, which if selected, will take high dynamic range photos. The fifth icon is white balance, which will allow you to change the color temperature depending on the lighting situation that you're in. The sixth icon is video resolution, which we already covered. Seventh is manual control. Now earlier we talked about how when the app boots up, it will default in auto settings. If you want to have full control of the camera settings, turn this on. Once enabled, you'll be able to use the control wheel to adjust each parameters to your liking. Eighth is scene, which gives you two options for responsiveness of the gimbal. Walking is selected by default, giving you normal responsiveness, or you can select motion if you'll be needing the gimbal to react quicker to your movements. Ninth icon is filter, which again allows you to select a filter look that overlays your footage and image. The tenth and last icon, settings, which gives you a small array of additional options to fine tune your gimbal settings. In the camera tab, you'll find the following settings. Beauty Cam, which add a bit of skin smoothening to your face if selected. Zoom sensitivity controls how sensitive the settings get changed when you rotate the wheel. OIS or EIS, which stands for Optical Image Stabilization or Electronic Image Stabilization, which if you have it on, turns on your camera's built-in stabilization. Grid are cross lines on the screen that you can use to help frame up your shot. Next up is Cam Mode. Just leave that on Pro, trust me on that. In the next tab, which is the general tab, you can check which software version of the Smooth 4 you have. Now the very last thing to talk about is object tracking, which can be found on the bottom left corner. To enable this, just tap on the icon and draw a box over your subject. So as they move, the Smooth 4 will automatically follow them. Alright, I think you guys are ready to go out to create some art, but hey, before you go, don't forget to come back to the Zillion social media for future tips and tricks and tutorials on how to better operate the Smooth 4. Again, my name is Jason Fong. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.